Hey, welcome back to another episode of Dirty Dave's Garage. Today we're working on a 2018 Dodge Grand Garavan. We're going to um, pull the transmission pan, dump the old fluid out that's in the pan, change the filter, and uh, put some new fluid in. Some tricks to this one though. Um, first thing you want to do is pop off this engine cover. It just pops off. I already popped them. You'll see it's got these little... Uh, like plunger things that go down and pop onto the engine on these these little nubs these plastic nubs no screws involved just set that aside I'm just doing that to make a little more room but uh, this is one of those no dipstick kind of engines um, for your transmission fluid and the unfortunately the dipstick there is no dipstick. You have to find the, and it's down here, right under this electrical mess right here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Couldn't be in a worse spot. <laughs> but it's down here. I'm gonna move my hand so you can see the actual plug. If you can see my finger, I'm touching it. It's black. It's hard to see. Maybe that'll give you a better, there it is. Now you can see it. It's right under this huge electrical harness. So that's going to be fun to get out. And you can just turn that with a pair of pliers and pop it off. But because there's no dipstick, you either have to pull your oil dipstick out, clean it off, stick it in there before you start, check it uh, hopefully when it's cold, and uh, get a reading, maybe make a little mark on your oil dipstick, and uh, use that when you're done to fill it back up through that tube. You'll have to stick a small funnel in there and uh, get your level back where it needs to be. What I'm going to do, once I get the transmission fluid drained, uh, I'm going to take my, my reading first, if I can get that cap off, and then uh, write down where it was on the dipstick or make a mark on the dipstick. I actually bought, and I'll put this in the link in my description, one of these universal transmission transmission check dipsticks and it comes with a chart uh, that you can use depending on the temperature and whatnot and the car you have there's an actual chart on here that lists most cars this one only goes up to a 2015 Dodge Grand Caravan but I'm sure the the numbers are the same but it tells you to use chart B which is this one at the top on the second half of the page and it tells you based on the ambient temp whatever the temperature is where it should fall on that dipstick so there's two ways you could do that you could try using your other oil dipstick you just slide it in until it bottoms out in the transmission pan don't force it just gently slide it in there I'm going to use this tool though <clears throat> and and find out where it is because it actually has markings and I'll put a note up here for the next time I do it and uh, use that for future reference so I'm gonna work take a pair of pliers twist that cap if I can get it in my pliers in there twist that cap and pull it off usually you turn it like a quarter turn counterclockwise and then you can pull it off the first time you take it off it'll be a little stiff but just take your time you'll be able to get it and then uh, you can stick your dipstick in and get your preliminary measurement so we'll be back in a minute and show you what we got. Okay, so I was able to get it out just with my fingers. I just turned it counterclockwise. You'll feel it when it it doesn't turn far, maybe a quarter turn, a little farther than a quarter turn counterclockwise. Once you get it loose, you just pull it right out. Mine came out pretty easy, so I didn't have to worry about trying to fit pliers down in there. So now we're going to get our dipstick in and try to get a reading. I'm just going to stick that plug in my pocket so I don't lose it. Hopefully we'll be able to squeeze this dipstick in there. Like I said, there's not a lot of room. We're going to fish this down. I'm guessing from the back side will be best. She's in there. Just sliding it in gently. Okay, it just bottomed out, and we are, looks like 
85 is where it is on mine. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not with that blinding light, but uh, that's where it's showing on mine. Right about the number 85 looks good to me. So I'm going to write that down. And then we're going to get the car in the air and start getting the pan off. Okay, so I did, I checked with the dipstick a couple more times and it came back, I did like three or four times I stuck the dipstick in there and it came back at 100 millimeters, which doesn't make sense to me because it's cold, it's been sitting in my garage, it's 30 degrees and 100, 100 millimeters is off the charts on this chart. So I'm going by what's on the dipstick, that's what's in there now, even though here it says cold your dipstick should show looks like 10 to 15 millimeters cold this chart again this was for the it says it goes up to for the Dodge Gancrit 2008 to 2015 for these motors and this is the 3.6 but uh, I'm going by what's on the dipstick because that's what came from the factory as far as I know <coughs> um, I bought it used don't think it's ever been the transmission fluids ever been serviced because it didn't show up on the Carfax and it was a rental car before I bought it so we're gonna go with what's on the dipstick hopefully it's not a problem it's been running fine just doing this as part of maintenance and uh, we'll take it from there all right, so we got the car in the air. Our transmission pan is right up front here. I'm gonna get back so you can see. Looking from the front bumper. This is our transmission pan. Got a bunch of small bolts. Not sure what size they are. I'll get them in a minute. But we're, we're not gonna take all the bolts out at once. We'll take all the front ones out. We'll leave a couple of the back ones in. We're gonna get a pan under it. And then we'll just loosen up the back ones because there's no drain plug you just got to take the pan off and it's a messy job so I strongly urge you to get one of these wide mouth funnels which I have sitting on top of my oil drain pan and again I'll put a link to these in my description uh, as well as the the filter and gasket and fluid that I bought for this car just to make it easier to, for you to find but this will help catch a lot of that stuff as it comes splashing out because it is a messy job I'm, I'm gonna warn you now but these wide mouth I think they call them top hat funnels come in handy and you can put them on top of any old kind of oil pan you have laying around I just have this standing one that I use under the lift so unfortunately this is as high as I could get my my van up in the air on the lift because I put these new LED lights in that stick down almost a foot from the ceiling so I lost some of my clearance but uh, it's a tall vehicle so it's just got to make do with what we got so I'll be back in a minute I'm gonna get the pan under there and ready and start pulling bolts out and we'll show you what happens okay so I've removed all but three screws I got one up front you can see it's already starting to drain and I left two in the back the ones in the back I just cracked a little. I only left two back there. Hopefully you can see them. Now one here, one over here, just the two corners and the, I say back, it's actually the front of the pan. This is what faces the front of the car. I left one in the middle up front and I'm just gonna take this. It's, it's loose. So I can loosen that screw up front a little more. It'll come out faster. This is the messy part of the job. I'm just letting a little bit drain off before I loosen the screw anymore up front because it's really going to come gushing out. And once you get as much as you can out with the two screws in the back, there's still going to be some in here. So be careful when you take those last screws, hold it from the bottom because you're going to have to dump this pan out. And I usually take some brake clean and spray it out, get it nice and clean once all the oil or transmission fluid drips out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the camera down. And let that drain I'll take that front screw out and let it come down as much as it it does with the two in the back on there and uh, let it come out so we'll be back okay so the front screws out all the way you can see you've got a nice gap in there it's running out it's an eight millimeter socket I'm using by the way 
So we'll let that drain a bit and then we'll take these last back two screws out and just empty the pan and then we'll, we'll scrape off the old, it looked like they used RTV gasket seal on it. Uh, but the new filter that I bought came with like a cork gasket so we're going to put that on. Maybe, maybe we'll put a thin bead RTV on it just to be safe to hold it in place. You notice I have a little magnetic screw pan. I just slapped it up on the control arm to put all my screws in so they stayed put and I don't lose anything. So I'm going to get those two back bolts out, let this thing drain, them, drain and then we'll get to the uh, filter part. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to, to drip out and drain, a couple things. To get the old filter out, and your old filter is this plastic thing right here. It'll come in your kit. There's a T25 Torx bolt or screw right here where my, I'm pointing with my Torx driver. And there's one in the back here. I'll try to get a picture of for you. You can get up in there. It's right here. You'll need to remove those two. They're not in tight. Get those out. You should be able to pop your filter off. And you'll see some of the RTV hanging here. I'm going to take a scraper once I get that filter out of the way. Just gently scrape any old RTV away. If I have to, I'll take a Scotch brad pipe to, pipe, uh, pad to it or a, a razor blade and gently scrape it away. I don't want it, You don't want to damage that surface and put any big scratches in it where it might leak transmission fluid down the road. So just be careful with that. We'll do this, the same to the oil pan here. Once it's done draining, I'm going to roll this out, spray it out good, scrape all the gasket off, clean the magnet off. There is a magnet in here, so I might be able to show you. It's right here. It's got some goop on it and some, some material from the clutch packs. You want to clean that out, put the magnet back where you found it. In fact, I'm just going to sit this down here on the floor, get ready to clean that out. We'll just spray it out with some brake clean, clean that magnet off, and if it, it comes out, just put it back in when you're done cleaning it, and then that'll be ready to go. We'll be back. All right, so we removed the two torque screws. We're still dripping, but this should pop out now. There, you, there's a little, uh, you can see like a nozzle going up into the transmission body here. That's probably going to be your tight spot, so I'm just going to pull from over here. <coughs> see if we can pop it out. Should it jiggle out. There it comes. Let's wiggle it back and forth. Dump out any extra you got in the fluid because it's going to have transmission fluid and you see there's a lot coming out of there and then I just let it sit in the pan and drain the rest of the way we'll let it keep dripping probably work on scraping off some of this stuff getting that off clean that up, surface up once we get the pan cleaned and the surface is here clean We'll start working on putting the new filter back in and we'll come back at that point show you that hopefully it's not much to it and we'll be back <clears throat> all right so we got the surface cleaned off i'm gonna go ahead and try to put this filter in we're still dripping a little but that's okay we'll slide the new one up in there <clears throat> Make sure you get your little nozzle up in the hole where it goes. Get it in position, wiggle it in. Remember we had to wiggle the old one out, so you want to make sure it's up in there. Line up your holes. Get your screws started. Torque screws. Oops. Torque screw. There it is. <coughs> so it helps to just pad it in with the palm of your hand, hold it in place. We need to move our 
throw it back out of the way just a little. Take your time, don't cross thread your screws. Make sure they're going in nice and easy. Want to. Just gonna tighten them up. We'll be right back. So I actually took a rubber mallet and tap this up. You'll see there's like a groove where this spout needs to meet up. And I just tapped it in so it was nice and tight. It was in there right tightened up both my screws so it's in there good and tight now we can start putting our pan back together with the new gasket I'll show you that there's our new gasket that came with our fram filter maybe you can see it that I've taken <coughs> cleaned up the pan magnets nice and clean Wiped it out real good. I had to take a razor blade, scrape off all that old RTV. I'm debating whether I want to put any RTV, put a small bead around this before I put the gasket on. But I hate that stuff. It's a pain in the ass. So I might just put the gasket on and then just keep an eye on it for leaks. See how the gasket does to make doing this next time a little bit easier. So once I get this ready to go, I'll be back. All right, just to give you an idea of what we got going on here, um, let me pan out a little bit. So this is our new gasket. What I did was I took four of the pan bolts and I positioned the gasket. I put a bolt in each corner to kind of hold the gasket in place. The instructions actually do say not to use any sealant once you scrape off all the old stuff, just use the new gasket. So we're going with the instructions. Uh, they said you could put a, a coat of grease under it to hold the uh, the gasket in place while you get it in position. But I've had better luck. We're going to try this with this car. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal to, to get those screws started and hold everything in place. So let's see how we make out. Hopefully everybody can see what's going on there. Again, the magnet goes towards the back of the car. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> it's going to go in just like this. I want to find my ratchet though. Just in case I need it. Let's see if we can get this bad boy up there where it belongs. You don't want to cross thread anything, you just want it to hold it in place. I think we're good. We got her started. Okay. Now we can go about putting all the other screws in. Just get them finger tight for now because you want to tighten these up in a <coughs> cross pattern. Start going around so you apply even pressure as you go. So crisscross as you're tightening your bolts. <coughs> Make sure it's all good and snug. Don't have a torque setting for you. They weren't on real tight. So I just recommend getting them hand tight and giving them a little little extra push for good measure and that's it you don't want to tear up strip out any of your screws if I can find that uh, Torx setting I'll put it in the notes below all right pans back on new gaskets in everything's buttoned up I'm gonna move everything out of the way get the car down and start putting some new tranny fluid in we we'll back All 
right, folks, we are in the home stretch. The worst is over. Now you can notice I've got my small, skinny transmission fluid funnel shoved down in that hole. Took a little effort to get it down in there. I'm replacing the old tranny fluid with, with actual Mopar ATF plus four, which is what's recommended. Then get synthetic or anything because I'm going to start doing this probably every 20,000 miles. Just changing that fluid out. So this does not get all of your old fluid out, by the way. This only gets out maybe a third of your fluid, which is why we have to measure as we put it in. But uh, if you do it on a regular basis, you'll always have fresh fluid going in there. And hopefully won't have any problems. And it's a little bit of a drop from here, so be very careful you don't want transmission fluid all over the place. I'm going to put about maybe a third of this bottle in, jug, bottle, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll check it once it's getting close to the mark we had on our dipstick. We'll start the car in park shift every gear about five seconds per gear and then we'll check it again and uh, see what our levels look like so I'm gonna shut the camera off get my dipstick out check my measurement see if it's where it was when we started or if it's close if I need to add more uh, we'll add more it's better to have a little less and have to add some than put too much but as long as you take your time and do a little bit at a time it's okay if you're a little over or a little under as long as you're close but just make sure before your final measurement you start the car and run it through the gears and let it sit in each gear for about five seconds to push fluid all through your transmission so we'll be back in a minute okay so we started the engine up I it took a, pretty much the whole five quart jug to get it back to where it was when I started this project. Engine was cold, hadn't idled or anything. Uh, started it up, ran it through all the gears, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> apparently uh, it drops down once you warm the car up a little bit until I guess it gets really hot. But uh, checked it with the dipstick. Just a minute ago, it was at 50. I'm going to check it again. So I figure some of the fluid needs to run back down in the pan. But I'll be checking on this once it's hot, once I get it out to drive. Can't do it today because we're having a little bit of an ice storm here on the East Coast. But uh, yeah, we're right around 50 right now and that's just idling for a minute you're really supposed to let it idle two minutes to check it what they consider cold on that chart but uh, I'm pretty confident we got the same amount of fluid in there as before we started <clears throat> and uh, if not I've got more I can add in that's all there is to it we'll put our uh, plug back in that we took off and we'll put our little engine cover back on and uh, that's it for this project. So hope you all learned something. Hope this was helpful. If you do, like and subscribe below. Check the description for links to any of the materials I use, the filter, the gasket, the top hat funnel, and the uh, Mopar transmission fluid. And happy motoring. We'll see you next time.